Today I'm going to show you how I stitch this, uh, it's called the lightning strike stitch. I do it a little differently. Uh, the person that came up with it, they do it in three passes. They do the side, the center, and the other side. Um, I was looking at the picture trying to figure out how they did it and I came up with a way to do it with one stitch. Um, there are advantages with the three stitches. You could do three separate colors and if I had the right color green I'd be doing red, yellow, and green. Do like a Rasta color but I don't have the right color green so I'm going to stick with the one color. Um, I'm not going to do the Cobra bracelet. It's just a standard Cobra. I've got four cores through here. Um, I have another video on how I do the two color herringbone stitch if you want to learn how I do the Cobra. But uh, I didn't have enough time to do that today and it makes for a rather long video. Okay, so I'm going to take the micro cord and just run it up on the back side of the bracelet. About three or four strands here just so I can lock it in place. <clears throat> and then I'm going to find a spot here in the middle center of the cores and I'm going to send it to the front of the bracelet. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so as we can see, the first stitch is just going to come from the center here over to <clears throat> one side or the other, and let's go to this side because it looks best. Alright, so in the Cobra you can see where we have the knots. We're going to go in between the knots, and I'm going to go underneath on the back side kind of. <clears throat> right there. That's going to give us our diagonal. And I'm going to go up, ow, through. I want to make sure I'm on that side of the cord towards me. And then we're just going to run this along the top of the cord and I'm going to come up the next top knot, I'm going to call it here. So that's going to give us our look. So once we're up on the top, I want to run it down again. This time, I'm going to come up through this back knot here. And what that's going to do on the back side, that's going to leave me this loop that's exposed and we'll use that in a little while I'll show you what I do to keep things consistent so I want this cord now just like this one I want it on the other side so we need to go underneath the stitch that we just made 
and now we're going to go across the bracelet and through this back knot. Okay, on this first one, I'm going to come back here on my core around my buckle and I'm just going to go around one of these strands just because I want to lock this in a little bit. And this is going to come down and through the top knot here and go down. So what we're going to end up with is going to end up looking like that when we get this all stitched. So our next stitch is going to come just right up and down through this top knot again. Just the same stitch we just did, the side stitch. And then I'm going to go up this bottom knot and I'll show you a little bit later this is going to make a little bit of a loop right here on the back side and we'll use that to keep things consistent here in a minute. Okay I've come up but now I want to put this on the other side of that so I got to go under the stitch we just made and then we're going to go down across to the next in between knots here the bottom knot And then this is where you can start to tell the difference between how I'm doing mine is we're going to take this, we're going to come up through this loop that we left on the back side. And then we're going to go under this top knot. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep this tight, keep it where we want it. So I've come up through the top of that top knot. I'm going to go down and come back up through this top knot. And that gives us our familiar barb on the lightning strike. Okay, I'm going to come down. This time, instead of going through the top knot, I'm going to make a loop around and come up through this bottom and we're going to leave that loop there so we can tie into it like we did before. But of course now I want to go to the other side of this. I'm going to go under that and we'll go across the face again. To say I think there's advantages of each way. Um, if I had the right color green I would definitely be doing this in three colors and make me a Rasta bracelet. So we've come across through the bottom knot. 
Now we're going to do the same thing we did before and we're going to go through this loop here. There we go. the top knot here to give us our other barb on this side. Once you get the pattern down using one cord it's not too bad. It takes a couple minutes to figure it out and get it going but uh, we're going to just take this one back up to the top through the top knot again and down. Okay, we're going to leave our loop, go up through the bottom knot on the back side here. Okay, once we get to the top, we have to go under the cord. across the bracelet and down through the back side the back knot the bottom knot here okay now we're back to this side we're going to make our cross over again go under cross it under loop that's there. Once it's under the loop, we're going to put it under this top knot. Keeps that nice and tight. Keeps our pattern consistent. And we're going to go down and then back through the next top knot to make our side barb here. Okay, now this time we're just going to come down, leave our loop, and go up through the bottom knot. And we'll leave our loop for the next go around. Then we have to take this under micro cord. Cross the face of the bracelet to the next back knot on the other side. Cross this under that loop. Out the front and then down through the top knot. I read the people that came up with this that their Facebook name is Lori and Ted Potter so I don't know if it's Lori or if it was Ted that came up with this but I think they said they used about six feet um, I'm under I think I cut just under five because uh, I'm only stitching eight inches this bracelet is nine and a quarter total flat length but the face of it is eight inches and I decided I needed seven inches per inch so that comes out to be 
something. I'll have that written down. I can't think and stitch at the same time, and hopefully you can't hear my son. I asked him not to go downstairs and turn his TV up full blast, so guess what he did? He went down and turned it on as loud as he could, so hopefully that's not coming through too bad. But this really starts going pretty quick once you get a pattern and make these connections to keep it consistent. That was the big thing that took me uh, quite a while. I was had nothing better to do. I used this to pass my time one day while I was waiting for some testing my daughter was doing at the hospital. So one of my initial thought when I looked at this pattern is I thought that they did it in three separate passes because that's the way it made more sense but I played around and played around until I figured out a way to do it in one pass and like I say it doesn't save a whole lot of cord it saves a foot foot and a half of micro cord maybe so that's not really the main advantage but the main advantage is just it makes it a little different but uh, same pattern on the face that you can see so just a different way of doing it I guess is the only advantage uh, the foot and a half of cord that you save I just wanted to show I was going to make one the way I made it anyway, so I figured I might as well give some more assistance. I know Lori and Todd, Ted, Todd, I'll have to look, but I know they posted a picture tutorial of how they did it, but I know a lot of people struggle, myself included with the picture tutorials. A lot of times I have better luck just looking at the knot and figuring it out for myself than I do following a picture tutorial. That's what I did with this stitch. But, you know, again, I <laughs> came up a little differently than the way they do it, but the final outcome, the of the stitch is the same so uh, there's always more than one way to get a job done stitch and I'll probably cut some of this out um, as you can see the pattern just repeats itself once you keep going I'm gonna probably stop after this stitch finish up and then I'll just show you how I do the last stitch and finish it up behind the bracelet don't put that in the loop though because my son's getting louder on his TV and I don't want to have to get mad at him, so I'll just cut the video short here and hook back up with you when I get this done. But, like I say, as you can see, the pattern just keeps repeating. Um, and it's just these little crossovers that I make that make it different than what uh, the originator had. But uh, I'll pick up here in a minute. Bye-bye. I'm just going to bring this across and through this end um, I tuck my end so it looks a little funky but 
it's going to serve its purpose that I want for this. Okay, just like we did before through this loop. Make that that way. And what I ended up doing um, for the 8 inches was 56 7 inch brick per inch. Um, the 9 inches would have gave me 63. This is technically 9 and a quarter, so it was like 64 and 3 quarter inches. I cut it at 60. So the 56 for the 8 inches give me four inches of scrap which is almost exactly what I have. I've got about four and a half. Um, I still need to tuck this in on the back side. That's not going to take that much of it depending on how far in we go. That's about it for this uh, lightning strike stitched cobra bracelet. Um, like I say, the difference you can see on the back side of mine is just a little bit of these crossings, which I think kind of look cool, but it's not going to affect when you're wearing it. You'll never even see those. If you were really particular, you could take this last little bit of scrap and we could put one more little stitch because, I mean, I'm not going to do anything with this anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go under these two, though, just because it's kind of a mess with how I've... my Cobra. We just come right through the center between the two, the four 